Hello, Internet! I'm Hamster Bob, and you are watching some more Ask Hamster. <laughs> anyway, let's just get on with it. Keep up the great work and content, Alex. My question is, if you could, would you make your job just doing YouTube? I would do anything to do that. I love doing this more than anything, seriously. If I could just do YouTube and that was enough to, you know, pay for my bills and food and gasoline and little stupid things that I need, and then, you know, taxes and all that other dumb stuff you gotta pay for, absolutely, I would do this all the time. You'd get so much more content all the time. I'd be streaming all the time. Yeah, but unfortunately I can't. As you guys know, I have several other jobs I have to do on top of this, so I wish I could, but I just can't. I'm here for the amazing person you are. I don't care if you upload bad content. I'd still be subbed because you're a friend of mine. What? Bad content? What kind of friend are you? These two questions will probably have the same answer. Okay, then I'll just answer them both now before actually reading them. No and yes, just to throw you off. What would you change about Monster Hunter Generations to make it the best Monster Hunter game in the series? Everything. Absolutely everything. Start from the ground up. Actually, here's a better way to fix it. Delete everything on the safe cartridge, and instead, install Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Best game in this franchise, right there. What do you want from Double Cross? Saturday Hike! The biggest thing I want from Double Cross, because at this rate, like I was just kind of implying with Generations, I think Capcom screwed too many things up in this uh, iteration of Monster Hunter, let's just say that. So, if anything, I want them to at least not go halfway with us on the West, and it, just make it a DLC game for generations. It's supposed to be an addition to the original game. It is not its own thing. Yes, they're adding a couple new things that would change how you play generations, like two different fighting styles that are new to the game. Probably there's some new hunter arts in there too. A couple new monsters, they're G-Rank. That's really not too much to, you know, advertise as your own game. They did that in the past, like I said in videos past, but the reason they did that was because DLC just wasn't a popularized thing back then, and now it is. Capcom can't keep getting away with this where they're releasing new cartridges and calling it a new game when it is DLC. They're taking Monster Hunter Generations, if they keep doing this, or other versions of the other games they have, and devaluing them to nothing. That game means nothing, and now everything is in the new one. I hate that about how they're doing their new video game. So if anything, the number one thing I need at a double cross, DLC. It better be DLC. Also, for an April Fool's Day joke, you should change your name to Gerbil Grenade. Oh, I've got better ideas for April Fool's Day, don't worry. Oh, this is big. Let's go fast forward. Thanks for calling stuff up about Monster Hunter Double Cross. To add on about what you said, this is like an ultimate version of Generations. This time it's different because we got an original game translated too. For example, we didn't get Monster Hunter 4 for the West, but we got Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate instead, which added a few monsters and extra content. But from what I'm seeing from Monster Hunter Double Cross, I don't think this is your average follow-up. They are adding a lot of amazing stuff, like two more styles, which is ultimately 28 uh, more ways to hunt. The monsters are looking incredible. The variants look amazing too. I think the Diablo set is going to be a nightmare, and the monster scene at the end of the third trailer, the one people are calling the equal dragon weapon or the EDW, I have a good feeling about. I'm definitely gonna buy it or try my best to, and in my opinion, you should heavily reconsider if you are thinking about not buying it. Your choice in the end, but it's looking amazing, and with the addition of G-Rank to it, I think you'll find a challenge that you are looking for. Winky face. I still completely disagree with you. Here's why. Like I was just saying about the whole DLC thing and Capcom not understanding how to market their games properly, Capcom, unfortunately, as of now, is operating more as a business and less interested in what you want as a gamer. And what I'm seeing right here, all of those things you're listing, is really the same amount of changes that happened between, in your example, of Monster Hunter 4 to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Imagine if we got Monster Hunter 4, you know, and then we played through it here, and then they released Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate to us in the West. There'd have been outrage. You know, that's that's a here a serious problem to keep. You know, it's it's a trick, really. It's it's a stupid marketing trick for businesses to get more money out of it. Because really, if you own for you, or I'm sorry, if you own Monster Hunter 4 and you want to play for you the expansion of the game you own, you shouldn't have to pay list price again to purchase the same game you already own. That's ridiculous. But aside from that, there's not, you're exaggerating the amount of changes here. There's very few. There's very few things they've actually changed. People narrowed it down to only five things they actually did to change the game itself. There's very few new monsters in it. A total of, so far, we know two that are actually new. There's a couple new deviants too. That's it. That's not something to get super excited about. Honestly, if it doesn't even come to the West, I'm not gonna be heartbroken. If it comes to the West and it's not DLC, I'm gonna be pissed off. If anything, Capcom needs to stop treating us like we're just people who are just 
throwing money at them no matter what they do. And I really urge the Monster Hunter community to be more critical at what they're doing because I want them to improve on the content they're giving us and not treating us like just people who are just gonna keep throwing money at them no matter what. And so far with people like this, that's what we're doing. Stop it! Thank you for always having time for us fans since you have multiple jobs, spend time to live stream and read our comments, edit and upload videos for Monster Hunter uh, and M a MGH and Pokemon fans. Maybe that was supposed to be Metal Gear Solid. Uh, thank new 1,000 subs. You never broke that promise. I didn't. If anything, YouTube did. YouTube stopped me from reading all 1,000. Now it's 500 now, but whatever. I do my best. Open for suggestions. Genuinely sincere. Zero to almost never gets pissed with stupid fan comment, which is funny because of the title of this video and you know what's gonna happen later. But anyway, reason being, if I have time, I see and like as many of your videos as I can and 98% finish them. Keep up the good work. Wish you more success. Thank you. Yo, oh, you guys are so nice to me. I, I gotta say, like, as much as, um, you know, people keep saying stuff like this on my channel all the time, I'm not like picking them out and, you know, trying to make myself look great. This is what's on the comment section of Ask Hamster, and you guys wanted me to read and respond to these. And this is not just Ask Hamster, this is on all sorts of stuff, like on live streams and all sorts of stuff. People say this all the time, which is really nice. I, I gotta say, the community here is so positive and everyone's so nice to each other. And the big thing that I want to point out that's a really big difference you'll find here as opposed to other YouTube channels, Say go to another YouTube channel where someone plays Monster Hunter in addition to another game. I don't want to name anybody, but just, you know, imagine a couple that you're thinking of, if you can think of a few, because I can. Um, think of some of them, and imagine if they made a video where they even mentioned something half of what I just said in the last few comments about Monster Hunter Double Cross. Imagine the backlash they would get, you know? Like, you guys are so much more accepting to understand me as a person. I'm trying to get through to you guys with an actual opinion. And if anything, say, this is even worse with Pokemon fans. Say a Pokemon fan because people label them as Poketubers and I can't stand it when people call me that. Say there is a Poketuber out there who makes a complaint about Pokemon Sun and Moon, for example, or some new Pokemon game. Outrage, because they're assumed that they must always like everything that comes out no matter what and if they don't all of a sudden people are going to be upset with them they're going to lose subscribers and that and that's how you know the youtubers being insincere as soon as that bridge happens insincerity which is why i never want to be a pokey tuber i don't want to be any tuber i want to be the omni tuber i am just me online i'm basically being like a bridge this camera is really just a bridge between me and you guys we're really just sitting down we're just friends seriously that's really all this is so if anything I i'm glad um Kiro Zinex, that um, you and so many other people appreciate that, and you guys aren't mad at me for trying to express my opinion, because if anything, I'm grateful that I have that ability to, because there's so many YouTubers out there who I know probably feel differently about a lot of different stuff, and they never get to express their opinions because they're being limited by their own fan bases. For example, I remember when Sun and Moon's Pokemon were coming out, and I was seeing some new, really big YouTubers, uh, PokeTubers, review what they thought of each Pokemon, Every single one of them was positive. And even though some of the designs, honestly, I was looking at them like, man, really, that one? No, you don't like that. I could see it in your face. You don't like that one. And they said it anyway, because it didn't matter. Who watches that content then? It's fake. It's all fake content. Who, who cares anymore if they can't really express what they feel? So, they, I don't want to go on forever, but thank you guys. Thank you all so much. Do you have someone that inspired you to do YouTube? Mmm, uh, YouTubers, not really, but if anything, I actually made a lot of video content of video games and stuff like that um, just for my friends uh, at high school, and uh, they were the ones who convinced me to upload it on YouTube, which was over 10 years ago now, so it's been, not really, but I've been doing it for a very long time. I switched channels and gave up, you know, doing it because of trolls on my old channel. The community wasn't as good. It was like I was just saying. It's funny because this community, I can compare it to what was before. It's so much better, and honestly, I don't know any other community on YouTube that is more positive than the one that is here, so I'm just super grateful for the people who are here, and I do it now. The people who inspire me now are the people here on this community right now. So, if anything, it's more of a continuing source of inspiration. Question, would you rather have a game that was so decidedly average in every regard, or one that had a mixture of amazing parts and head-bangingly awful ones? I'm boring. I would go with averagely average. See, I'm I'm the opposite. I I need a game that's got to be really something. You know, even if it was really bad, I've played games intentionally knowing they were really bad. I played Superman 64. I think I got to like level seven. I got really far in that game because it was really bad, really hard, really frustrating, 
and it was a challenge, you know, at the very, it was still bad, but it was still entertaining because it was bad. There's also games that I really like that are really good in some aspects and really bad in some other aspects, and it doesn't matter, I'll still play them completely. Monster Hunter Generations. There's some awesome aspects to that game, make it really fun, make it, in some ways, the best Monster Hunter game, I don't want to go back to Monster Hunter, like the best one I've ever played. But there's a lot more aspects that make it the worst Monster Hunter game ever. And because that it is so in between and both, I'm spending my time playing all of it, 100%ing the game, you know, like I did with 4 Ultimate. Even though 4 Ultimate, I largely enjoyed it. There's very little I complain about in 4 Ultimate, but there are some problems in 4 Ultimate. It's not the perfect Monster Hunter game. But still, yeah, I, an average game? I mean, imagine me playing a completely average game on here. It's just like, well, um, now, uh, now we're doing this. It's, uh, okay, and now she's over, and on to the next thing. It would, I'd be driving myself and I'd be pulling my hair out, seriously, like, I don't know, I, I gotta do something that's very awful or exciting, I don't care, I just wanna do something that's very something. What would you do if put into the shoes of any main or sub-character from any franchise? That's like a really loaded question, and I'm gonna try and, like, shorten it down to two characters that just kinda popped in my head. Um, Trainer Red. I would basically, in Pokemon, run in the grass forever and try and find shinies. I would probably be one of the worst battlers. I mean, though I do know a lot about how, you know, Pokemon battling works. Obviously, I played a lot of randomizers. I have to be decent at it, right? But, um, I'd spend so much more time shiny hunting. Like, that matters to me so much more than the actual game itself. Obviously, it's how I spend my time in the actual games. Um, but the other character I was thinking right away was in Metal Gear. Um, jeez. I can't think of, like, oh. Even this morning, I was, for some reason, I was thinking, like, Man, if I had to be one of the snakes and go through what happens to them in the game, which one would I have to be, you know, if I was going to pick one? Who gets it the lightest? I was thinking, God, it's all terrible. I don't know who. I don't know. It'd be so hard. Question one. Any plans on a meet and greet? Oh, he's asking this. Still no time? I've been thinking about it. I just need to get um Kim in on it, too. We need a good excuse to go somewhere like a convention or something around here. The only problem with this convention is, is it's really expensive to get a table, and I have to be able to afford it. Um, if anything, I could do something that's, like, locally in the area for how many people are actually just near Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I didn't hear it, like, last time. How many people down in the comments would actually be up for something like that? Question two. Any plans on a Chrono Trigger playthrough? Considering it, aren't you? No, actually, not really. I have way too many games on my plate right now, I can't. In your opinion, what is your proudest and or hardest shiny you've obtained so far? Mm, that is a really hard question. You know, um, I'm, I feel inclined to obviously say like the rarest ones because I was just saying before, like the rarity is obviously what I'm so excited about. So like Celebi, our recent find, but I still keep going back to the most important ones to me, which are my Ho-Oh and Celebi. Um, not ho oh I'm not Celebi, I'm sorry. My ho oh and my Mew. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, my Rayquaza is really important to me. My proudest and hardest. 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 The word hardest. That's probably, like, my Aerodactyl. Seriously, like, I wish I could have played more with that Aerodactyl somehow. You know, used him in a game. Because, um, I, I hunt shinies, and then if I can't, like, use them in my own playthroughs, like Pokemon Q-Charm, I just kind of box them, because I'm like, well, I got it! Yay! I don't know. I gotta go on to my next hunt because I have too many hunts planned. So I'm like, ah, it's a bummer. I kind of forgot about him because I never got a chance to play with it more. I live in Texas. I'm going to Ohio. You're coming to my den. But seriously, though, if anybody wants to do the meet and greet meetup stuff, um, let me know down in the comments. Like, keep replying to, like, one person that's, like, talking about a meet and greet thing. And um, if there's, like, a big following of it down there in Cincinnati, I'll make a video about it later and we'll try and plan something, okay? How would you transfer data from 3DS to Switch for Monster Hunter Double Cross? I just don't see why they would release Monster Hunter Double Cross for the Switch if part of the purpose of Double Cross is to be able to transfer your data and not have to do all of the uh, lame gathering stuff again. One, my biggest problem with Generations to begin with is the lame gathering stuff. They put way too much of it in that game. It's like triple the amount of any other Monster Hunter game. It's ridiculous how much is in there. So yes, I see your concern of why that'd be a problem. Here's why I don't think it's going to be an issue for the Switch, though. They're going to be more than likely making a Pokemon game that shows up on the Switch eventually, and Nintendo is all about its own hardware syncing with other things. There's definitely going to be a patch as soon as games become necessary like this, like Monster Hunter, where you're going to need to be able to sync with them. Monster Hunter is going to be releasing a game on the Switch soon, um, and more than likely, there's going to be some content that's installed in a new update of the Switch that allows it to wirelessly connect to the DS. 
I guarantee you it's gonna happen. So with that, it, it's really just a matter of time sitting there waiting. You know, it's the same thing of like, you're gonna want to trade, you know, uh, a Pokemon between one game and the other if that's really what it's gonna work like. Um, there's also, say for example, the Wii U syncing with um, the 3DS for Smash Brothers. That stuff has already happened. Don't worry about it, it'll happen. And all those stupid lame gathering quests you had 100% through like I did, you will not have to do them again. Once you've finished Heart Gold Cute Charm, will you shiny hunt the legendaries? And uh, keep up the awesome videos. Uh, yeah, actually, I am hunting some of the shiny legendaries now. I've hunted several in Heart Gold in the past though, and some people have asked me like, hey, when are you gonna shiny hunt Mewtwo? And I'm like, I already did. Don't you pay attention to my videos? But there's um, Articuno we had obviously longer ago. You should know that if you watch Cute Charm. I have a shiny Articuno from that game. Um, I've already hunted Rayquaza as well in that game, so that's already three. Ho-Oh, I've already shiny hunted in that game, that's already four. Um, on top of that, you saw recently I got shiny Moltres, that's already five legendaries, 8192 out of that game that had nothing to do with Q-Char. Um, obviously my next target was um, Zapdos, so I'm working on Zapdos next. After Zapdos, I honestly, I really want to go for the Kyogre and the Groudon. So that's already a total of three new hunts in addition to the five I've already done. Um, after them, I'm not really sure. Because that's basically, I don't know, that's basically all the legends of the game anyway. I mean, there's more, but um, in terms of the ones that I really want to get right now, um, that's it. Because I've already got the shiny legendary dogs, I've already got the um, the Sinnoh legendaries from other hunts and stuff like that. So I'm not, I don't really care to get them again. I'm not going to shiny hunt a Pokemon twice. If anything, why would I do that when I can like at least go for a living dex? I don't really want one. It's just the fact that, you know... Q Charm has some holes in it where some Pokemon will just never shine. You know, the genderless Pokemon or Pokemon whose genders can't change. Those, I see those Pokemon who I can't get with Q Charm as opportunities um, to try and hunt them somewhere else. It's like an incentive or a window like, hey, Kangaskhan, you can't get it any other way. Why don't you try and hunt it this way? That's, that's how I always viewed shiny hunting in general because I found it so much more fun to go for a shiny that I can't find any other way to get, you know? That's what it's all about. I always wanted to get into the Monster Hunter and Pokemon series. Which game should I start with? That's a good question, and it really depends on what kind of game consoles you have. I would say, assuming you have all of them and you can start from anywhere, um, I would start with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. That, I think, was by far the best one as a starting point. It's a very easy beginning. It's very good for beginners to get started and understand how all the weapons work. There's a great tutorial system, and it's optional, which is necessary for the game. Because the experienced players, if you, like, catch on quickly, you can keep playing farther, and obviously as you beat all the monsters that are set before you, the story is so much more interesting in 4 Ultimate than it is in any other Monster Hunter game. Trust me, we'll just leave it at that. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is the most fulfilling, by far, Monster Hunter game I've ever played. It's amazing. And from there to a Pokemon one, Pokemon, see, see, I would say Sun and Moon was a really good game, but it is definitely not a good launching point for the series, because if you really want to understand what Pokemon is, I would not start there. In my opinion, the best Pokemon game is actually Pokemon Heart Gold or Soul Silver. Those two, I think, are still the best games they've ever made for Pokemon, which is kind of saying something. I'm not sure, you know, maybe there's some things that they should be taking from the uh, original Heart Gold and Soul Silver, or even Gold and Silver. I would recommend Heart Gold Soul Silver. They made so many good changes to that series that um, I think it's it's worth playing over the originals by far. It's it's so much better. But um, you know, to that extent, I would say um, X and Y are also really good ones too for a starting point. But um, if you're into the 3D stuff, but pers uh, personally, I think Heart Gold and Soul Silver are better picks. And if you want my pick between the two. It's heart gold. Hashtag X, Camster. Would you make a Let's Play of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite if you still have the game? Also, do you like Splatoon? I was just looking, the games around here somewhere, but as of now, to record Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, I would need a PSP capture card or some other devices that can actually record from the PSP. So already that's a really expensive series if I was gonna do that. And besides, it's a really long series, I'd rather not. The reason I stopped playing it so quickly was because the controls are just atrocious on the PSP. I hate the PSP. I can It's so awkward in your hand. I cannot play a Monster Hunter title with it at all. If anything, it'd be really helpful if I could play it like, you know, hook up the PSP or like, you know, get that download information and play on like on a PS3 system or something like that. It's probably possible, but um, as of now, like still, there's way too many other games like I'm saying I want to play for the channel. And if anything, of other Monster Hunter games I want to play in the future, the original one I really want to play and the monsters who you never get to see from Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, I want to play on my channel in a mini series. So aside from those, that's all the Monster Hunter you're probably going to be getting for the time being outside of new games. 
As for Splatoon, no, it's just not my kind of game. I mean, I never really got into it. It's just one of those fad things that, you know, a bunch of kids were playing, and I was like, ah. Since there will be a lot more information on Double Cross by the time episode 14 is made, have your opinions on it changed at all? No. You should even check the original video I made talking about Monster Hunter Cross's release trailer video way back when, like over a year ago, I think now. And people were so mad, you know, that I had an opinion about the game that wasn't positive. And jeez, I was like, guys, you gotta get over yourselves. You know, this doesn't look good for the franchise. This doesn't look good for the franchise. And then when the game came out, guess what? The Monster Hunter community complained because of everything that I was pointing out. Wow. Look at that. So, if anything, Monster Hunter Generations not only didn't get rid of those problems, but expanded on the problems and made them bigger. So, now I'm like, oh, alright, well, whatever. Question time, how did you meet Monster Hunter series? I met it by looking for demos at the Nintendo eShop, because I'm poor. <laughs> I met her on a cold autumn afternoon. It was raining outside, so I walked slowly into the game section, over to the GameStop, and to their clearance section because I'm poor, hehe. <laughs> and then, I picked up the Monster Hunter case and looked at it and thought, huh, the Nintendo Wii, having a good game? No way. But I thought to myself, wow, what else could be in this game? A friend of mine had told me about it in the past, so I thought, no, I'm gonna stalk her Facebook page first. So I researched her on the internet and found out, wow, this is a really amazing person. I need to spend more time with her. So I went back to that GameStop and I asked her out. We saw each other casually a few times for several years before eventually I started filming me and her together and we made it serious on YouTube. There's always a way to make a question creepy. Almost 100 episodes! Pokemon Q Charm, yes, is now almost at 100 episodes. I'm super excited about it and technically because I have to record, you know, farther in advance as I've said multiple times in Ask Hamsters, um, I can now promise you guys episode 100 will happen and as I've been trying to, you know, make sure it happened in the past, that episode 100 is going to be our re-challenge of the Elite Four that I honestly don't even know if we were going to beat or not. Um, because their levels get a huge buff, and I don't know who to bring, honestly, for that fight. But yes, we are going to be having an episode 100 Pokemon Q Charm. We're going to be taking our shinies and re-challenging the Elite Four in that. It's going to be an awesome, crazy, long, fun episode. It's so much fun, seriously. But after that, like, way later, honestly, um... It's like several episodes later, because if you guys have seen the recent streams of what's going on with Pokemon Q Charm, there's been some problems going on lately. And um, it's a good opportunity to try and tell you guys really quick because there's something really bad that happened. So, um, briefly, my Safari Zone wasn't working at all, and our final shinies that I need to hunt for that game are all in the Safari Zone. If my Safari Zone is glitched, which you'll find out later, it, it is, then there's no way for me to hunt the final shinies for Q-Charm, I mean, the whole game is screwed, we can't finish it. And um, so, here's what I tried, because we tried so many things, basically the problem is, my Safari Zone, if you set up um, two areas next to each other in the Safari Zone, that are identical. Say, for example, Spiel is who we were trying to go for in the Let's Play, or no, I'm sorry, the uh, live stream. I need 35 water objects to make a Spiel spawn, and you can only put 30 objects in one area. The peak is where you need him. So instead, place two areas of the peak, and in one of them put 30, the other one put 5, or some combination, as long as they total 35. You run in the grass, you'll find Spiels. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked in the series so far. But for some reason in my game, it's not working anymore. In everyone else's game who was trying it on the live stream, it worked for them. I even, just the other day, pulled out my Soul Silver game and was like, oh, let me try it here. I did it in my Soul Silver game. It worked there. Exact same thing I'm doing in the other game. I went and transferred the Safari Zone over to my Heart Gold because you can do that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You can transfer your Safari Zone. So I did. Ran in Safari and it wasn't there anymore. So my game is literally glitched, I have no idea what to do because I can't find the final shinies in the game, so I'm really scared for the future of Q-Charm. If anything, I set up the objects hoping that the long hunt that Cerebi says, you know, wait 100 days, yay, hopefully that works. If it doesn't, we're really screwed. Haru is forever in our hearts as a Ponyta. Why is it called a building if it is already built? Why is it called a ceiling if it's already sealed? I have so many questions! Is Hamster even wearing pants right now? So many questions! Where is Pokemon Heart Gold Q Charm? Right here? Oh no! Alex is dead! Oh, it's okay, I got better. Did you just roast me out of nowhere? Yes, son! 
is going down now. I'm about to roast you like Thanksgiving turkey. You roast that, right? I bet you'd still be playing Monster Hunter if it was all about raising RPG level babies. Oh wait, you probably did. How about you tell me one more time how I'm using the Switch X wrong? One more time! Now I think I'll use Trans Slash anyway because screw you. Barely make any changes but add G-Rank? Shut up and take my money, right? If you think Monster Hunter's hard enough as it is, why do you gotta cheat to make it even easier? Would you look at that? Even one of your eyes is bigger than the other one. What's wrong with you, you freak? Speaking of which, you got something in your eye. Oh wait, it's my fist! <laughs> Capcom is milking Monster Hunter like it's fat and calf, and you've got all the others in your mouth. Where was I going with that? If you see some weapons in Monster Hunter you want to build, how about instead of cheating next time, you just go out, fight the monster, and just do it! Capcom's got you by the balls. And you just like them filling you up, don't you? What makes you so atomic, Thomas? Is it because Capcom blew up your wallet? That one didn't even make any sense. <laughs> I'm obviously kidding. Atomic Thomas is a great person. He watches a bunch of Monster Hunter stuff. He's always talking. Um, I've hunted with him before, actually several times, even on live stream. Uh, him and uh, Caitlin, I know. Um, shout out to you guys. You're both really great people. I'm obviously just joking about Monster Hunter. I don't really feel that, you know, ridiculously over the top about it. But either way. Wait, wait a minute. What? Rip stream. Oh, no, not again. Yes, son. Oh. <laughs>